Hello, this is Tony Heller from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is about the very real climate crisis of 1936. The week of July 7th through the 14th of 1936 was the hottest week on record in the United States and much of Canada. The pink dots on this map show everywhere which got over 100 degrees Fahrenheit or 38 degrees Celsius that week. Much of this area, including up into Canada, got over 110 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 43 degrees Celsius. And this was at a time when atmospheric CO2 levels were very low, below 310 parts per million. So people who claim that hot weather is associated with higher levels of carbon dioxide are either ignorant or dishonest. From July 7th through the 14th, 1936, every state reached 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 40 states reached 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and 16 states reached 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 43 Celsius. Those states were California, South Dakota, Arizona, Illinois, Indiana, North Dakota, Iowa, Kentucky, Nebraska, Wisconsin, Missouri, Montana, Oklahoma, West Virginia, Kansas, Minnesota, and Ohio. South Dakota reached 115 degrees Fahrenheit and California was over 120 degrees. The worst of the heat wave was over the Midwest, and this next graph shows the average July 7th through 14th maximum temperature at all Midwest U.S. Historical Climatology Network stations going back to 1895. As you can see, temperatures have generally declined over the last 120 years, but 1936 was an unbelievably hot year. The average Midwest temperature that week was 103 degrees Fahrenheit, which was 10 degrees higher than the second hottest year, which occurred in 1921. Even more incredible is the percentage of hot days in the Midwest. This graph shows the July 7th through 14th percent of days above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, or 35 Celsius, at all Midwest U.S. Historical Climatology Network stations. During that week in 1936, almost every single temperature reading taken in the Midwest was over 95 degrees. The previous record was just over a third of days above 95 degrees Fahrenheit, so 1936 was completely unprecedented. And it was a similar story for 100 degree days. More than three quarters of the temperature readings taken in the Midwest that week were over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which completely obliterated the previous record. This animated GIF shows the progression of the heat wave during that week. I'm going to let it run a few times and you can watch it for yourself. Remember these purple dots represent temperatures over 100 degrees and many of them were over 110 degrees. You can see the heat wave expanding and reached its peak area around July 10th. But actually the hottest weather occurred on July 14th. And it wasn't just that week in 1936 that was extremely hot. This is the temperature anomaly map from the U.S. Weather Bureau for July 1936. You can see that the whole country was blistering hot. It was 12 degrees above normal in the central part of the country. For the entire month of July and the entire summer of 1936, it was the hottest on record in the United States. People were dropping dead from the heat in the United States and Canada. According to this account, 12,000 people died from the heat in 86 cities in one week. The New York Times reported on July 7, 1936, heat rising to 119 degrees. North Dakota temperatures set all-time records in fourth severe day. 31 cities are over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Illinois highways blow up. The Queenslander reported on July 16, 1936, that it was the worst drought in history. The drought, which already has become one of the major catastrophes in American history, has entered on its second month. The Chicago Tribune reported 112 degree temperatures in Chicago. Can you imagine the mass hysteria which would occur if that happened now? This year has been the wettest on record in the United States, but in 1936 they were having a terrible drought and millions of people had to abandon their homes and move to California. It was a very real climate crisis and we had very real climate refugees in 1936. The press didn't have to make up fake stories about a climate crisis because everybody was living through it and they could see it right in front of their faces. On July 9, 1936, New York City set their all-time hottest temperature of 106 degrees Fahrenheit. 
This graph shows the hottest temperature per year in New York City going back to 1895. You see that 1936 was the hottest, and since then hottest temperatures have been declining, with recent years being among the coolest. I've been mostly focused on the United States so far, but the situation was very bad in Canada too. Hundreds of people were dying there, and Manitoba reached 112 degrees Fahrenheit. They didn't need someone like Catherine McKenna to go around making up stories about a climate crisis because people were dying in the streets in Canada and they could see it for themselves. It was extremely hot and the effects on humans was very real. Thousands and thousands of people were dying in the heat. Double feature movies became very popular during the 1930s because movie theaters were one of the few places that had air conditioning. So people would go to the movie theater and stay there all afternoon to escape the heat. But heat and drought weren't the only things going on in 1936. There was lots of other incredible extreme weather that year. February of 1936 was coldest on record in the United States and much of Canada too. North Dakota set their all-time coldest temperature record in February of 1936 and their hottest temperature just a few months later in July. I already showed you the U.S. Weather Bureau temperature anomaly map for the United States for July 1936, which was very red. Well, here's the same map for February of 1936, which was extremely cold. Temperatures were more than 20 degrees below normal around Montana and western Canada. But the extreme weather of 1936 wasn't just limited to extreme heat, extreme droughts, and extreme cold. We also had some of the worst floods in U.S. history that year. A few weeks after the record cold of February 1936, around St. Patrick's Day, the United States had massive floods over much of the eastern half of the United States. This was downtown Pittsburgh on March 21, 1936. The water was about 10 feet deep. My grandfather was in a business meeting in downtown Pittsburgh that day, and he had to be evacuated by boat. March 20th, 1936, all eastern America under floodwaters. Terrible dust storm rages in the west. President signs appeal as capital flooded. A hundred cities and 14 states affected. The White House had to be sandbagged in order to keep the waters of the Potomac out. But the bad weather of 1936 wasn't just heat, drought, cold, and floods. Some of the worst tornado disasters in U.S. history also occurred that year just a few weeks after the flooding. Third worst disaster, tornado in USA, over 500 dead, April 17, 1936. The death roll as a result of the tornado over six southern states has exceeded 500, while the badly injured total 1,727. Here's a picture showing some of the damage in downtown Gainesville, Georgia. Tornado areas bearing dead, 201 in Mississippi City and 183 in Georgia, 33 missing. April 11th, 1936. The United States was hit by record heat, record cold, record drought, record floods, and record tornadoes. But the U.S. is just 2% of the Earth's surface. What was going on in the rest of the world that year? July 25th, 1936. Typhoon sweeps Japanese island. 741 killed or missing. A typhoon swept the island of Kyushu, inundated 2,000 homes and damaged crops. Those killed and missing number 741. October 14, 1936, Philippines typhoon, 400 reported dead, fear of a rice shortage. February 22, 1936, a Queensland tornado, township ravaged. December 9, 1936, 300 dead, Anatolian floods, 50,000 people homeless. Angora, Turkey. More than 300 were drowned and 1,000 were injured. There were 50,000 persons homeless. Thousands of men, women, and children were wandering, terror-stricken, and practically unclothed in an effort to escape from the floods. And on the same day in the Philippines, thousands of Filipinos are missing in northeast of Luzon Island as a result of the most disastrous flood in the history of the Philippines. So the Philippines was having their worst flood in history, and South Africa was having their worst drought in history. February 27, 1936. Cattle dying in hundreds. Transvaal's most terrible drought in living memory, Johannesburg. Cattle have been dying in hundreds. Farms have become desert wastes. Farmers are facing ruin and actual starvation. And thousands of square miles of land are without a single blade of grass in northern Transvaal through the worst drought in living memory. 
And meanwhile, terrific gales were lashing Europe and Britain. Phone services dislocated. 1936 was a very real climate crisis in the United States, in Canada, and over much of the rest of the world. So how does the press respond to this? Well, they ignore it, and they make up fake stories about heat waves in other countries. The Washington Post says, Global warming led to scorching heat in Europe. Leaders must take it seriously. The Washington Post printed this article on the same day when much of Europe was having record cold. So let's look at the heat wave, which the Washington Post says is due to global warming. The red line here is temperatures in Paris this year, and the blue line is temperatures in Paris in 1947, going from June 1st through the end of summer. As you can see, the pattern has been very similar this year as it was in 1947, but temperatures were hotter in 1947 than they were this year during both of the heat waves. In 1947, CO2 levels were very low, and this year's pattern is almost identical to 1947. It's pretty obvious that carbon dioxide is not having any effect on Paris heat waves. But the Washington Post lies about almost everything in support of one political agenda or another. This is a graph of the highest temperatures recorded in Paris every summer going back to the year 1900. And the hottest temperature this year is 98 degrees Fahrenheit. You can see that many years in the past were hotter than they were this year. The hottest year was 1947 when Paris reached 105 degrees, which was 7 degrees warmer than this year's highest temperature. And in 1900 it was 101 degrees, which is 3 degrees warmer than this year's highest temperature. People suffered tremendously during the 1930s from the depression, the heat, the drought, the floods, the tornadoes, and the looming war with Germany. Steinbeck wrote about this poignantly in his novel, The Grapes of Wrath. You would think that government climate scientists like those at NASA would want to understand what caused the extreme weather of the 1930s, but they don't. Instead, what they do is they simply erase it. This animation flashes back and forth between the 1998 version of NASA's U.S. temperature graph and the current version. You can see how they've erased the heat of the 1930s, and made the present hotter. They've turned a long-term cooling trend into a long-term warming trend by simply altering their own data. The most prominent government climate scientists, the ones whom the press always talk to, are not actual scientists and they're not interested in climate or science. They're political consultants who are paid to push an agenda. Our children deserve better. They deserve to know about real American history. They deserve to know that none of these fake climate actions which politicians are talking about are going to have any impact on the weather. These politicians are not going to stop heat waves, droughts, floods, tornadoes, or any other kind of extreme weather. The worst of which, like heat waves and droughts, were much more common in the past than they are now. They can confiscate people's money, their cars, their energy supplies, their lifestyles, and we're still going to have extreme weather just like we had in 1936. The whole climate crisis is a total scam and we need to do everything we can to stop the politicians and fake scientists who are pushing it. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science and propaganda for a long time.